Hello, my name is Dr. Marsha Braden, and today I'll be talking about 10 things to know about Fragile X Syndrome. I have put together 10 things that I would like you to know about people with Fragile X Syndrome. This has come from my career and a number of years dealing with individuals with Fragile X, teaching them in giving therapy and social skill development. The first thing is that Fragile X Syndrome is indeed a spectrum disorder. So there is a broad range of effectiveness. I'm often asked when I see an individual for the first time at any age, where do you think he fits in the spectrum? Is he mild? Is he moderate? Is he severe? And again, that's really hard for me to guess or to give any kind of an account for an opinion of because so often this really will now depend on their environment, how they're taught, and whether or not those opportunities have been available to the individual when they were early. We do know that early intervention is critical. And so those individuals who have been given those opportunities early on to improve their speech and language, to help them regulate their sensory input and their reaction to that, and to help with their cognitive ability in learning, will obviously be on the upper end of the spectrum. But it is broad, and it just depends on the individual and the opportunities that have been afforded to them. Girls with Fragile X Syndrome are affected differently than boys with Fragile X Syndrome. That simply means that oftentimes they can function fairly well in an academic arena, but have lots of social issues and shyness that preclude them from being a part of their classroom. They can sort of hide behind their fragile X. They can often be very easy to guide and direct without a lot of behavior problems. But again, we have to look carefully at those girls because they tend to mask anything that might be singling them out or making them look different. People with Fragile X Syndrome are very social. They love their family. They enjoy helping others. They often have a good sense of humor. And if, in fact, you know anyone with Fragile X Syndrome or are lucky enough to have a child with Fragile X Syndrome, you know their sense of humor is incredible. They really are fun to be with, and you want to include them at all times. They tend to be social in their academic arena as well. And when they're included with typical peers, many of the typical peers truly enjoy them socially. People with Fragile X Syndrome are global learners. We know that they have good long-term memory that we can capitalize on, and we can teach to that strength to get better outcomes. Fragile X Syndrome is a developmental delay, and the growth is slower, oftentimes uh, causing them to be delayed and different from their peers. But the most important thing is that they continue to learn throughout their life. And I've often been able to watch the trajectory of those individuals that come to me who begin at an early age, maybe five or six, and now are 20-year-old adults. And there are things that they are able to do now that truly I never thought would be possible when I knew them at a younger age. And so again, they move forward, they grow, and they continue to gather information and learn. The indirect social contacts are more productive. This is sort of hard concept to understand because we oftentimes feel that when we teach these individuals, we need to be direct. We need to be concise with our delivery. And yet, the more direct we are with those people when we're teaching them, the more they may become anxious, shut down, and really unable to access any of their skill set. So again, lots of side dialoguing, talking to another person in the room, and letting that individual with Fragile X Syndrome really eavesdrop and learn from that side dialogue they will, in fact, learn more that way than when they have direct instruction. 
we sort of shy away from that direct instruction that oftentimes accompanies ABA, Applied Behavioral Analysis, because that drill and that repetition can sometimes be anxiety-provoking. There are a number of talented therapists that are board-certified behavior analysts that understand and know how to use that approach and those strategies with individuals with Fragile X syndrome. And with an altered approach, it becomes very, very successful. We also know that we do sort of a triad when we instruct. That means that the teacher and two other children, one of whom would be Fragile X, would be a good way to teach because as we're asking questions of the individual who doesn't have Fragile X, the person with Fragile X will do some incidental learning. And they sometimes even answer the question that you're asking the other individual. Forced eye contact is very difficult. It's well-researched, and it's all over the literature, that we don't want to force eye contact. We know that it's more difficult for those with Fragile X syndrome to attend and to look at an individual than other disabilities. So again, if we force it, oftentimes what happens is that the individual becomes very anxious and shuts down or may even engage in extraneous behaviors to get out of that situation. We often ask for them to wear sunglasses or for us to wear sunglasses when they're having a conversation so that the conversation is not nearly as direct. We can also ask them to look at the speaker, but not into their eyes. We can ask them to look at the top of the head of the speaker or the ears of the speaker. And that somehow allows them to socially engage in a way that's not anxiety provoking. We know that they have fine and gross motor deficits, and it's pretty common in those with Fragile X syndrome, especially the males. And that presents a real conundrum because on the one hand, they want to participate, they want to be able to draw and write, and yet it's very difficult for them to remember the motor movements that they need to remember to provide good writing or drawing. People with Fragile X syndrome could also have a dual diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. But we need to remember that those autistic traits are simply behavioral in nature and not genetic. So the cause of autism varies, but the cause of Fragile X is always genetic. And we need to remember that anyone who meets the criteria for autism spectrum disorder meets several traits on a diagnostic category list. Those mostly relate to social language deficits and rigidity in behavior. People with Fragile X syndrome can meet that diagnostic criteria for autism spectrum disorder. And so you might have an individual that has Fragile X syndrome and the DNA has provided you with that information, but they also can meet the diagnostic criteria for autism spectrum disorder. The percentage of those individuals with Fragile X syndrome who meet the diagnostic criteria varies. It depends on the research and the literature that you are reading. But generally, it's about 30% of the Fragile X population that meets the diagnostic criteria for autism spectrum disorder. And probably the most important thing to remember is that people with Fragile X syndrome have a normal lifespan, they can work, they can be productive, they can be involved in their communities, and they can have committed relationships. There have been a number of individuals that I've been able to track over time that have proved this out, and we know that they can contribute and be great members of our society.